In early 2019, the United Kingdom suffered one of its most serious ever defeats at the United Nations when the General Assembly demanded that it abide by an International Court of Justice advisory opinion and cede the Chagos Archipelago to Mauritius. In this video, I'm going to look at the so-called Chagos Islands disputes. In doing so, I'll show how and why this tiny collection of islands in the middle of the Indian Ocean is such a crucial and sensitive issue not only for Britain, but also for the United States, and how it touches on important aspects of decolonization and human rights. Hello, my name is James Collinsy. Welcome to Independent Thinking, a channel dedicated to international relations, statehood, independence, and the origins of countries. If you were asked to put together a list of the world's territorial disputes, the chances are that the Chagos Islands would rank fairly low in terms of wider recognition. Now officially known as the British Indian Ocean Territory, the 55 or so islands of the archipelago was stretching across 640,000 square kilometres, or a quarter of a million square miles of ocean, cover a mere 60 square kilometres, or 23 square miles of actual land. However, the small size and relative obscurity of the archipelago disguises its significance in international relations. In the 50 years or so since it was built, the joint British-United States military facility on Diego Garcia, the largest of the Chagos Islands, has played a crucial part in various military operations in the Middle East and South Asia, including Iraq and Afghanistan. Indeed, it's ideally placed to support military activities across an entire arc stretching from East Africa to Southeast Asia. But the Chagos Islands have also become mired in controversy. The British government has faced numerous court cases over its treatment of the island's inhabitants. Meanwhile, the manner in which Britain took hold of the islands has become a major dispute that has gone all the way to the United Nations General Assembly and the International Court of Justice. The story begins in 1814. Under the Treaty of Paris, Britain agreed to hand back a number of territories it had conquered from France since 1792. However, a few would remain under British sovereignty. In the Indian Ocean, Britain retained control of Mauritius, the Seychelles and the Chagos Archipelago, a collection of islands lying approximately 2,100 kilometres or 1,300 miles to the northeast of Mauritius. Collectively, these territories were administered from Mauritius, although the Seychelles became a separate crown colony in 1903. By the start of the 1960s, and in line with the process of decolonisation taking place worldwide, Mauritius began to call for its own independence. However, and prompted by interest from the United States, Britain decided to retain control of the sparsely populated Chagos Archipelago, which held a strategically vital location at the centre of the Indian Ocean. In September 1965, following negotiations in London with Mauritian representatives, it was announced that the islands had been detached from Mauritius in return for £3 million in compensation and a commitment that the islands would be returned to Mauritius if no longer needed for defence purposes. Weeks later, it was announced that the Chagos Islands would become part of the newly established British Indian Ocean Territory. Although Britain insisted that the agreement had been legitimately reached, it nevertheless sparked international concern. On 16th of December 1965, the UN General Assembly passed Resolution 2066. As well as noting the right of the people of Mauritius to freedom and independence, it also invited the government of the United Kingdom to take no action which would dismember the territory of Mauritius and violate its territorial integrity. Over the next two years, several more General Assembly resolutions were passed that not only reiterated that the need to respect the territorial integrity of colonies, but also noted that the establishment of military bases and installations in these territories is incompatible with the purposes and principles of the Charter of the United Nations. Despite this, Britain refused to reconsider its decision. On the 12th of March 1968, Mauritius became independent without the Chagos Archipelago. Having detached the islands from Mauritius, Britain and the United States now began building a major military base on the largest of the Chagos Islands, Diego Garcia. 
To facilitate this, it was decided that the inhabitants of the islands should be removed. Between 1967 and 1973, the entire population of Chagossians, estimated to be anywhere between 1,400 and 2,000 people, were forcibly deported, mainly to Mauritius, the Seychelles, and then the United Kingdom. As a result, a number of court cases were brought against the British government by the islanders. In 2000, the British High Court ruled that the islanders should be allowed a right of return, except to Diego Garcia. However, the ruling was later overturned. And while Britain eventually came to accept that the manner of the removal of the Chagossians was wrong and provided them with compensation, it nevertheless steadfastly refused to allow them to return permanently, although it has arranged some short visits. As far as the British government is concerned, resettlement would not only be unfeasible, it would also be contrary to Britain's defence and security interests. Meanwhile, in the years following independence, Mauritius came to feel increasingly aggrieved at the way the islands had been removed from its jurisdiction. In its view, the separation had been done under duress as a condition for independence. It therefore called for the British Indian Ocean Territory to be disbanded and the islands returned. At the same time, it also took up the case of the Chagos Islanders, promising that it would begin resettlement if it regained control of the archipelago. Although Mauritius's diplomatic campaign secured several resolutions from the African Union, its big breakthrough came in September 2016 when it brought the matter before the UN General Assembly to request an advisory opinion from the International Court of Justice. Despite strong opposition from Britain and the United States, on the 22nd of June 2017, the Assembly adopted Resolution 71-292 by 94 votes in favour to 15 against. Specifically, two questions were put to the court. A. Was the process of decolonisation of Mauritius lawfully completed when Mauritius was granted independence in 1968 following the separation of the Chagos Archipelago from Mauritius? And B. What are the consequences under international law, including obligations reflected in the above-mentioned resolutions, arising from the continued administration by the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland of the Chagos Archipelago, including with respect to the inability of Mauritius to implement a programme for the resettlement on the Chagos Archipelago of its nationals, in particular those of Chagossian origin? Following written submissions, oral proceedings got underway at the court in early September 2018. Again, Britain argued that the decision had been made with the agreement of the Mauritian authorities. In response, Mauritius argued that the territory had been detached under pressure as a condition for independence. On the 25th of February 2019, the ICJ gave its advisory opinion. On the first question, the court found that the process of decolonisation had not been lawfully completed. Agreeing with the Mauritian position, it argued that Mauritius could not have freely concluded an international agreement with the UK while it was under the latter's authority. Therefore, the detachment could not be considered a free and genuine expression of the will of the people concerned. Moreover, in line with international law and relevant General Assembly resolutions, Britain had been required, as the administering power, to respect the territorial integrity of that country, including the Chagos Archipelago. Turning to the second question, the court argued that Britain's continued administration of the Chagos Islands constituted a wrongful act. Accordingly, the United Kingdom is under an obligation to bring an end to its administration of the Chagos Archipelago as rapidly as possible, thereby enabling Mauritius to complete the decolonisation of its territory in a manner consistent with the right of peoples to self-determination. The result was obviously a major defeat for the United Kingdom. However, it would get worse. On the 22nd of May 2019, the United Nations General Assembly passed Resolution 73-295 by a massive 116 votes in favour to six against, with 56 abstentions. This demanded that the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland withdraw its colonial administration from the Chagos Archipelago 
unconditionally within a period of no more than six months from the adoption of the present resolution. Moreover, it urged the United Kingdom to cooperate with Mauritius in facilitating the resettlement of Mauritian nationals, including those of Chagossian origin, in the Chagos archipelago and to pose no impediment or obstacle to such resettlement. Needless to say, the six-month deadline set by the Assembly passed without the islands being returned to Mauritius. More to the point, there's little sign that anything will be done anytime soon. In 2016, Britain extended its agreement with the United States for the use of Diego Garcia for another 20 years. To add to this, there is little that can be done to enforce the decision. The ICJ advisory opinion was non-binding. Also, any attempt to address the matter in the Security Council would be blocked by Britain and the United States, both veto-wielding permanent members. While the Chagos Islands dispute may be little known, it nevertheless touches on a range of important issues. For a start, it highlights the process of decolonization and how borders were drawn by colonial powers, not only at the point of conquest, but also at the time of departure. Then there's the question of human rights and the ability of colonial powers to deport people from their homeland to serve their own interests. A step that Mauritius is now openly calling a crime against humanity. Balanced against this, both the United Kingdom and the United States regard the islands as vital to their security and that of their allies around the world. Indeed, British officials insist that the defence facilities on the British Indian Ocean Territory help to protect people here in Britain and around the world from terrorist threats, organised crime and piracy. For its part, Mauritius now argues that it would be willing to consider permitting the base to stay. Meanwhile, and perhaps ironically, the dispute has also been seen by some as a symbol of the declining influence of Britain and the United States in the world. Not only was the scale of the defeat at the UN General Assembly surprisingly large, especially on the second resolution, it was notable that most of their NATO allies abstained. Critics also point out that the UK's decision to ignore a ruling of the ICJ and a UN General Assembly resolution undermines its ability to press others to abide by international law at a time when Britain is looking to establish a global role in the aftermath of leaving the European Union. For all these reasons, and regardless of where one stands on the issue, the impact and significance of the Chagos Islands and the dispute over their sovereignty is far greater than many might realise. I hope you found that interesting and useful. If so, here are some other videos that you might enjoy. And don't forget to like and subscribe as this helps the channel to grow. I produce new videos every Friday. Thanks so much for watching and see you in the next video.